Through the years, I've been on both sides of the hiring process. I've been on the side where I've been looking for a job and I had to send my resume out. And I have also been on the other side where I would be hiring prospective employees and usually they'd be developers. So I have seen the resume creation and management process from both sides, both from me creating my own resume to reading countless resumes that have been sent to me from other other developers looking for employment. And so in this guide, what I want to do is talk about some best practices associated with creating and formatting your resume. And in this guide, I'm going to talk about three principles that you should use when crafting your own resume. First and foremost, you want to keep it simple. Second, you want to keep it relatable. And third, you want to keep it professional. So let's take a dive into each one of those items so we can see how we can actually create a resume that's effective. To start off the list, let's talk about keeping it simple. I've seen so many resumes that were just filled to over the top with all kinds of explanations on what the employee did in their education or in their career. I've even had some resumes or five or six pages long where they talked about individual projects that they worked on and how those specifically talked about how good they were at a specific skill or something like that. We want to stay away from that. We want to keep the different terminology and the list of items as straightforward as possible. So the items that we should include on a resume are your name and contact information. You'd be shocked at how many individuals will write multiple pages listing their accomplishments but forget to leave their email, phone, and social media links. Next is your education. And when I say education, I don't only mean traditional education sources such as your high school and college. The education portion of a resume should include any boot camps or online educational institutions that you've completed. Third is your work experience. Now in your work experience section, brevity is a virtue. Hiring managers don't want to read through every little detail of every project you've ever been involved in. They simply want to ensure that you're going to be a good fit for the position that they're looking to fill. That's it. It's not that complicated. Next is your set of skills. Another common mistake I see from applicants is forgetting to list out their full set of skills. As with all of the other resume elements, keep this list as simple as possible. For example, I summarize my list of skills down to a few lines that discusses the programming languages and the frameworks that I work with. And lastly, your achievements. You should list out any achievements or certifications that you've earned in your career that are applicable to what you do. If you ran a marathon, don't put that you finished a marathon. Or if you ran a Spartan race, don't put that you were a Spartan race finisher. Hiring managers don't really care that much about that. But if you say you're getting a, or you want to get an IT job and you have the certifications necessary for that, make sure that you list out all of those because those might even be required when it comes to getting hired. Next on the list is to keep the resume relatable. When I say relatable, what I mean is that every job is unique. So say that you want to go get a job at some giant software organization that has all kinds of rules and requirements such as working with UML standards and having a bunch of specific programming languages and frameworks that are, you're going to be required to work in. Make sure that you tailor your resume to illustrate how you could fit in with that kind of a system. Hiring managers don't want to hire just pure rock star developers. They want to hire developers that are specifically going to fit in with the corporate environment and to make sure that it's someone who they can simply plug into the system and will start giving them some performance right away. Now, if you think that changing your resume for every single company that you're going to send it to is sneaky or anything like that, that is not the case whatsoever. Instead, you can think about this kind of like the way companies, online companies, think about A-B testing. For example, if you go to Facebook's website one day, then you may see a few different components on the page. If you go on the next day, or possibly even if you're someone else on the other side of the world, 
you're gonna see a few different layout items. And that's because Facebook implements something called A-B testing, which means that they show one set of users one version of the application, and they show another set of users another application or another version of the application to see which ones perform better. It's the same thing with your resume. You wanna try to customize the resume so it fits in with the audience that you're showing it to. And to round out our list on how to create an effective resume as a developer is to keep it professional. As I already mentioned earlier, hiring managers could care less about your hobbies. Talking about your hobbies, your interests, your extracurricular activities are things that can be very effective during the interview process. For example, say you're interviewing with someone and you find out that you both run marathons. That can be a great thing you can talk about and you can actually use it to build some rapport with the interviewer. However, that is not apply when you are sending in your resume. The hiring manager is simply going to skip past that and typically the room that you spent saying that you finished this race or that you love snowboarding or anything like that, that is room on the page that is very valuable and you could have shown that you work with another framework or something else that could show that, the, that you as an individual are going to be the best fit for the organization. Now in summary, creating a resume is an art form. The resume needs to be succinct, it needs to be tailored to the person who's reading it, and it needs to specifically show why you are the best person for that specific job. If you can create a resume that does all of those things, you're gonna be putting yourself in a very good position for getting that job.